Hi, this is Dr. Claire, and this is our lecture on island biogeography. So island biogeography is the study of uh, islands and how many species are present on any particular island, because it varies depending on the, on the um, traits of the island. So let's take a look at what determines uh, what species are present on a particular island. So there's two major factors that determine whether species are present on an island. Uh, one is the rate of immigration. So the rate at which new species arrive on that particular island. And the other is the rate of extinction, so the rate at which uh, species become extinct on that particular island. Um, so the, 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 the animals that are present on a particular island don't necessarily remain constant over time, animals and plants. Some of them may be popping in and popping out, um, and they may not be present all the time, but you have a particular number of species that you expect to be present um, on the island, and that number of species um, is going to be determined by these extinction rates and immigration rates. So as the number of species increases, the immigration rate tends to decrease because um, there's already a bunch of different things on the island. So if a new individual of a particular species somehow ends up on that island, chances are pretty good that it's already there. So um, it doesn't represent a new species, right? Um, so as you get more and more species, the chance that there's are, they're already there goes up and up and up, and there's just not very many new things to colonize the island. So the rate of immigration, the number of new species that you see per year, um, gets lower and lower. Um, at the same token, when you have more species on an island, the extinction rate increases because chances are good that two of those species are going to be competing for resources, and one of the species is going to drive the other one extinct. And this is just local extinction, just on the island, not like global extinction, they're never going to come back. Um, so what you tend to see is that as the number of species on the island increases, the extinction rate increases. So you can predict the number of species that are going to be on the island um, to be the point where the number of new species that arrives per year is equal to the number of species that goes extinct per year. Um, and so that's the equilibrium point, and that's, how, that's the number of species you would predict to be on the island. Okay? That makes sense? Now, um, there's a number of things that can influence um, the, the, that equilibrium point, point. Um, and one of those is island size. So bigger islands can support a higher number of species. So bigger islands have lower extinction rates. So this is the extinction rate of a small island. This is the extinction rate of a large island. So larger islands have lower extinction rates. At the same time, larger islands are easier for dispersing animals to find. If you're flying over the ocean, uh, it's much easier for you to run into a big island than to run into a very tiny island. So the immigration rates of large islands tend to be higher than the um, immigration rates of small islands. It's more likely that a new species is going to be going to find that island. So if you look at the number of species on any particular island, you tend to see that large islands support more species and small islands support fewer species. Okay? And if you actually go out and you look at the data, this is some data um, from the Caribbean. And these are a, a number of different islands of varying sizes, and you, you see exactly what you would predict based on the model, that um, large islands have a greater number of species than small islands, okay? Um, so wh what's interesting about this? Why do we care? Uh, well, this is, might be hypothetically interesting for understanding islands in the ocean, but um, human development causes islands on land. Uh, through what we call habitat fragmentation. So when we go and we make farm fields, or there's urbanization, or whatever um, uh, development we do on the natural landscape, we break up the habitat into little bitty chunks. So there's a little patch of forest here, there's a little patch of forest there, there's a little patch of forest there. Um, and so what's the biodiversity going to be like in each of these little fragments of forest? And how can we maintain species uh, when we fragment the landscape? So how can we make sure that species that we're interested in, maybe, say, um, cougars or bobcats, um, have the habitat they need to survive, okay? Um, so one thing you can look at with the fragmentation is how easy is it for um, animals to move back and forth between populations. Um, so if you have um, ways for, for animals or plants to um, move between populations, then that increases the immigration rates, and that can keep the, pop the diversity in these fragments higher. If you raise those immigration rates, then that shifts that whole species number over, the equilibrium species number over. So that's great. 
Um, and so one way you can do that is to create what we call metapopulations. And metapopulations are interconnected populations. Um, so that there's individual movement. There's a lot of immigration uh, and movement of individuals between the populations. And one way you can do that is by having habitat corridors between fragments. So you have a little strip of grassland or natural habitat that goes between fields and that allows for um, individuals to move through those spaces and maintain populations in all of the different fragments so they don't go extinct. Okay, um, that is uh, my little lecture on island biogeography and I'll catch you next time.